started off my program today is talking about growth and leadership, and the program is really about that particular subject, our growth and what the leadership has provided and what kind of city we have. The city that we have is called Pearland. Next time. You know, Pearland started out with 1,500 people back in 2000, back in 1960. I moved here in 1965, we had 3,000 people. And uh, we considered that ma a major growth back in those days. But uh, we also, that made us the third largest city today in the Gulf Coast area behind Houston and Pasadena. And it also has made us the fifth, lar eighth largest city, fastest growing city in the nation. And I'll tell you something. Growth is fine. How you grow is what is important. That's the important thing. And it's kind of interesting that uh, of the fastest cities in the nation, only six of them are in Texas. <laughs> and uh, Pearland's one of those. Now, when you talk about growth, let's look at the historical growth pattern we've had. We've grown, I think, in a significant, but a very positive and a very constructive way over the years. Starting at 1,500 back in 1960, we we're 125,000 a day. But you know, Pearland is 70 square miles, 48 of those square miles are inside the city limits. That's what the 125,000 is. We also have an extraterritorial jurisdiction, we call it ETJ. We have mud districts in there. One time in the future, we will be annexing those mud districts. And when we do, when you start and think, they're future citizens, so we've got about 150,000 people inside the city limits today in our 100-foot trip. That's important because growth is where you have your major construction, where you have your major economic development, and where you have the best developed cities. Leadership, growth is good. Without leadership, it doesn't make a difference. Leadership in Paraland has been very fortunate because we have been able to do something I think is very special. And that is that uh, we, we've uh, begun to top out pretty well with the type of quality we have. And uh, you do that with quality leadership, quality employees, and a citizenry that really enjoys being in a city like Paraland. You do that in Paraland with the city council, and uh, I think some of those guys are here. Would all my city council members stand up at this time? There you go. <clears throat> this is the team it puts together, and uh, leadership with, with our city council I think is very important. But you also have to have the other type of leadership, and that is our city management. We are a city council manager form of government, which means our, by charter, our city manager, Clay Pearson. Clay, would you stick your hand up or stand up? Well, stand up so we can get a shot at you, too. <laughs> when we talk about, about our city manager form of government, well, Clay is the guy that is in charge of all of the operations and actions of the city. He's the big boss guy. He has a tremendous staff at our city management and our staff together have made Pearland a very special city because working with the council and is very visionary, a city staff and a city manager who are also visionary and constructive, makes a big difference in our life. Let's do something that I always like, and that is talk about Pearland. Now this is something that probably none of you have ever bumped up against, but maybe something that you would remember, but it's something also that I'd like to share with you. People in the bits. This young lady belonged to the Fifth Harmony Group over in, uh, over in uh, New Orleans, and Katrina ran her out. She came over to Pearland with us, and uh, she's an extremely talented young lady because she decided while she was over here that why don't I go and try out Dancing with the Stars? How many of you in Pearland have gone and applied for Dancing with the Stars. She did, she's a Pearland citizen. Well, she did, and uh, she applied for the 2017 Dancing with the Stars championship trophy, and uh, she and her partner didn't win, 
but she was, they were selected for third place. But uh, the judges said that her dancing was breathtaking and described her as being in a class of her own. And this picture doesn't really show her too well because the ones we have we caught her on the dancing floor and the lights were turned down so it's rather dark to see. But this is the best picture we could get of her. I'm very proud of her on that. Which I'm, thank you. Five years ago, you remember those pictures at the top up there? Six new Pearland citizens. <laughs> David and Lauren Perkins. Uh, that was ready. That hit the international news. Well, five years later, the bottom picture shows a bunch of blossoming independent young citizens. Isn't it amazing what happens in five years, which I think is great. There's another young lady in Pearland that uh, has a unique type of background. It's something that kind of amazed me when I found out about her. She grew up in Nigeria. She was on a plane going back home from an event, and it crashed. And there were only two people that survived, and she was one of them. But she was in the hospital in Nigeria for something like, oh, close to two, to two and a half, three years, and was not getting any better with her burns and her wounds. And uh, they found out about the Scottish Rite Burn Hospital over in, over in Galveston. And she and her mother came over here. Well, when they came in, she over here, they had over 100 surgeries and a whole bunch of burn and uh, just amazing things like in her hands. There were webs in between. They had to go back and slice in between of them. And it's just amazing. But while she was in the hospital in Nigeria and here, she sang. That's all she could do. She couldn't get out of the bed, but she developed a singing ability. And then she applied for America's Got Talent. How many people around here that you know has gone to America Got Talent organization? <laughs> she did. And she sang. And, and yet she did something that uh, I caught one of her acts on television this last summer. And the, the young lady before that was also this past summer. She was, uh, she, she told her story and then she sang. And the people in the audience stood up and they had tears in their eyes. And it was just amazing what, uh, what effect she had on them. She didn't win. She came out and was selected for the uh, uh, finals, you know, but uh, she's, She's still a wonderful person, and she still visits and works. She has a master's degree now from St. Thomas University in, Paris, in Houston. And she uh, goes to the, the Scottish Rite Hospital and with the young kids and encourages them because she said, I've been there where you are with burns and things. Look at me. I'm getting better. Thank you. There's another young lady from Pearland. Harriet Jeffries, number 26. She kicks footballs for the Dawson Eagles. And uh, the homecoming queen, she was selected as a homecoming queen at the Brazoswood game. And uh, that's her standing in the upper right with the coach. And uh, she, she contributed uh, six extra points and a uh, field goal, which is great. I thought it was a wonderful measure. There she was out on the field as a homecoming queen. Well. Next weekend, she's back at work in Pearland. And they were doing us a fit. It was tied 35 to 35 with 1.8 seconds left, one minute, eight seconds left on the scoreboard. She kicked, there's a picture of her kicking that three points to beat Pearland. Isn't that fantastic? She's a, a really a soccer player. She said, I'm going to go to college and do soccer. <laughs> but I bet she winds up kicking football for somebody somewhere else. I think it's wonderful what we have in Pearland. <clears throat> Another young lady is sitting on the hood of the car in the upper right. Morning dove, she put, put her nest on a Pearland police car at 187 and uh, started hatching out a little brood. And would you believe it? The police department put the orange cones around it, took care of her, opened a uh, Facebook account. They came up with a name for her, too. They called her Pearl, <laughs> which I think, is, I think is great. But uh, they took care of her and watched over her. And finally, the kids got their wings good up, knew how to fly, 
and they wave goodbye to the dean. The little crew's flying off, going off to do that death thing somewhere else. And I think that's great. And we're able to do this because, you know, Caroline is a bird sanctuary. A lot of people don't really know that. So I think it's, I think it's great that we have that particular uh, in the parallel. There's another interesting event that took place, and that was a bald eagle. That's the, that's the lady eagle sitting in there. And right, next, right in front of her are a couple of young eaglets. And uh, she kept feeding them and taking care of them all the time. And uh, after a while, well, they got their wings all exercised and ready to fly. And they took off and did their eagle things <laughs> in the future. And they'll be bald eagles of the future. I think that's great. Well, when you stop and think about it, every one of those slides was about a female. So, ladies in Paraland, I've just honored you with, with a show of what women in Paraland do. <laughs> And I think, I think it is great that we do that. But um, we have a lot of women in parallel. I think Carol Arts with her crew, of, selected crew, and have done a good job in, uh, of making parallel very special. And I even, um, something I don't know whether many of you have met by love of my life, which is my daughter Patricia here. <laughs> so <she's, laughs> she came down from out of state, um, and she's, uh, she, she's in the finance business with Citation Oil Company. So finances, let's talk about that now. <laughs> we may need your help later, Trish. <laughs> Finance Department, City Council, with the assistance of the staff, have put together some very strict requirements for our budget and policy and controls of our monies. Finance Department is responsible for the management, City financial documentation, purchasing, and preparation of the annual budget. And we're going to have a budget meeting here this next, uh, next Friday night and uh, to make sure that we start the process all over again. And they, uh, in the process of doing their job, they've been highly recognized by Government Finance Officers Association and so the Comptroller, which I have a picture of right after this, I think. Yeah, there they are. That's a group right there that put together some great work, and they don't get an awful lot of credit for what things they do, but, I, but it does make a difference when you get your picture taken once in a while, showing off your, your goodies. And people like Tony Carbone in the finance business, he knows about that. So, next slide. In the wake of Hurricane Harvey, and the normal procedures that we had, normal, products that we had put back in shape and build new things, we did issue a budget. Doing a budget, doing Harvey, was not an easy thing to do. It's, it's both of them are kind of a difficult task. But we managed. We came up with 68 cent tax rate per 100 valuation. And uh, I think with that in place, we can continue doing some things in Pearland. The property tax fund Funds our police and fire service, traffic division, parks, general governmental functions, annual debt service, payment for bonds approved by the citizens. And we're going to be looking at what some of the bonds are doing later in our presentation. Here's what our tax rates history is about. It's a part of hiding behind that sign there, but started off in eight, 1991 with 80 cents. It's gone down a little bit, way down a little bit. And uh, our value later on in, the, in the, this next year, well, we're in it right now, where we started from 17, uh, 2017, 2018. Anybody in here in finance business, loan new money, banks, you know what this means. Credit ratings reflect sound financial management practices and decisions. That's a picture of our financial health right there. And I think it's darn good. It's something I'm very proud of. 
That look pretty good, Trish? Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Got a finance person get a thumbs up on that one. <clears throat> Economic development is something I think that uh, is very important. And uh, I think it's important also that we remember that without finances, you can't do much. Or you wouldn't have this little story right here of economic development that Matt Buchanan and his group have put together from our, uh, we introduced a while ago with our board of directors of the Pearland Economic Development Corporation. Years, several years ago, we put together the Pearland 2020 strategic plan. He has been working on that strategic plan for the last several years and just begun to develop into something very special. Pearland is a little different from most cities. We, uh, have a plan, we're working on it. And uh, I, I tell you, it's uh, when I stop and think about what, what that group has put together in the way of an economic development plan, if you go down Kirby Drive, you'll find about six or eight quality development that has taken place. And we'll be looking at some pictures of those in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Black has helped put together some pictures for me so I'll be able to showcase a little bit of what we're doing. Also, one of the things I think is very important, when you come into Pearland, first thing you see is, is it trashy or is it nice? Well, we're enhancing all of our entrances, and they're all pretty well finished except for Kirby Drive, Cullen Boulevard, Pearland Parkway, Dixie Farm Road. And we have left this State Highway 288, of course, we're waiting on uh, the Missouri County <clears throat> Toll Road Group and TxDOT doing the rest of it going down to Houston. But uh, we're, we have a picture. I thought we had a picture of that. Later, later on, I'll show you that picture. Two Flow is one of the, project, pro, uh, the developments. I was out there yesterday driving around just to make sure I was able to see what this place looked like. It looks almost like it now, but in the development. There. They've uh, selected this property after searching around quite a, quite a number of areas. It's an 80,000 square foot facility. And uh, they made a decision by saying that, uh, you know, they look around a lot searching for a property and we bought here and we're happy where we are. Another one is Lonza, which is the out of big, it's not really a big state, but it's a, from a financial standpoint, it's great. It's Switzerland, out of, out of Switzerland. It's based out there. This is a 250,000 square foot facility. And interesting, it started out as 100, and it's a pharmaceutical bio, biotechnology therapy development process in, in our facility. And when the, some of the pharmacists around, or pharmaceutical companies around, found out they were that close to, to medical center, they put in some orders and they had to increase it to about 100, another 150,000 square foot while they were building. So it's now a 250,000 square foot facility there on Kirby Drive to drive by. Uh, you're gonna be amazed at what it looks like and the, how, how, what a wonderful your city. Flow Works, drive down 5835 uh, South by High School, right across the street from there is this facility here. Uh, it's another 225,000 square foot facility that uh, Matt and his crew has brought, brought into Pearland. And uh, it has, uh, uh, it runs about $80 million, we said, and uh, it's, uh, it's something that's going to be a facility that is going to produce an awful lot of jobs for us. It started off with about 80 employees, so we'll find out how that works out. Startup companies. You want to be a place where you have startup companies coming in place and building. That's how Lonzo started. That's how Flow Work started. That's how Mitsubishi started. They do this this way. But uh, base, base pair biotechnology uh, started out here in 2014. <clears throat> they developed so well and so fast that uh, they've been able to expand and had to move into another facility out at the uh, Reflection Bay uh, office uh, uh, complex out there. That's a picture of their opening uh, facility. I thought that was kind of great. 
that, that's something that uh, Matt and his group have brought together pretty well. Art Adent uh, Medical is uh, another biomedical facility. They have partnered with the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center on their facility. They've been here for several, a uh, couple, three years, and uh, they've grown so much they had to move into an office down the street from this uh, biotechnology, other biotechnology group. And uh, they, it's down in the Reflection Bay office complex as well. This group, this represents the start of how you bring people in, start the business, and then they, they expand to be the world's greatest. And I think hell is a good place to start. Memorial Harmon Hospital, everybody knows Kyle Price. He used to be down in Memorial Harmon Southeast. Well, as they both Memorial Harmon Southeast and uh, Memorial Harmon Pearland have grown, he came over and is now the CEO of both of those facilities. And uh, they've done a lot of uh, building and, and enlarging. One of the important things I think that they're in, in the process of doing is expanding their current fac emergency facility to trauma level four designation. And we don't have many of those around and I think being able to do that in parallel is something very special. And also, uh, they've expanded some relation partnerships throughout Missouri and uh, Fort Bend County and in Galveston County as well to, to expand their service and relationship. Server Clinic, that's the first nonprofit charity clinic opened in Pearland. It was done by, happened to be my uh, heart doctor, who is Dr. Uh, Dr. Nathan. And uh, he's not here today, he's in Europe now on a trip, but uh, a server is a, uh, is a derived from Sanskrit and it means selfless service or reaching out and helping others and so forth. <clears throat> but it, uh, it's uh, now located in the, the first city hall that Paraland had, which is now the, uh, the neighborhood center, and they meet every Thursday from 5.30 uh, to 7.30. And the important thing on that is that uh, there's local hospital doctors and nurses that uh, they're in, in service today. They are doing their service that once a week at the, at the hospital. Capital improvements. If you're building a city, and we said a while ago, we're growing pretty fast. And I think we are. But if you're building, you've got to have capital improvements. Well, we're one of the fastest growing in the nation, and our charter requires that we have a five-year running capital improvements program and process, which we do. Right now, our list 2017, 2018 charter, uh, 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 not charter, but our <coughs> uh, budget process worked the first year of that five year, which is the oldest one, and uh, then we'll build another one on, so it's a continuing. What that does, it provides the drainage, streets, water, wastewater, city facilities, and stuff like that that needs to be improved. And we'll also look at some of the facilities here in just a few minutes. I think it's, it's kind of nice to see what some of them look like. One of them, City Hall and the Annex. Would you believe they're almost 40 years old? Now, at 40 years for a facility, my house was built in 1965, and I'm still living in it. And it's, it's still hanging in there. <clears throat> Not too well. But uh, <laughs> these, these facilities, like uh, the city hall, libraries, and, and uh, the police station, they have high use of people in and out. And uh, it's, it's kind of a, a rough, pretty rough service. The city hall is built to, to house and incidentally, this one was built to replace the city hall that the server group is now using, which is, which is now the old Pearland City Hall. We call it the Neighborhood Center now. But uh, it, be, we've adapt, we have gone in and we're not quite through with it. I think Clay <coughs> made several promises when we we're gonna get, move into there, but we, we, we're still working on that. <laughs> and, and I'm in the police station right down from, police chief fire's office, and further down the hall is the jail, so I'm an awfully good boy, <laughs> deportment-wise. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, also, as you build the library across the street, of course, it was built in 1998, 
And that was one of the uh, bond issues that the city citizens put together and were able to, uh, uh, we were able to pass. So we use those bond issues now to upgrade the library across from City Hall. That's one of my favorite ones. But uh, it's one of two that we have in the city with Missouri County City uh, Library System. And this one also happens to be the most used in Missouri County. It's something that I think is very special and it's uh, got some people here from the library system. So we have a little, thank you for what you do there. Fire Station One, actually Fire Station One was really built at Orange Street and uh, Old Alvin Road in what we used to call the barn, uh, the pub public service facility. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's close to 50 years old and it has, has a pretty tough treatment over the years. So this is gonna be the replacement. It'll go down the street on Old Alvin Road and McCard Road, which will be the center of their service area. And uh, it replaced the old fire station one. Doris Fenwick Nervous, uh, Nature Center. You know, we've been planning on this one for a number of years, 7,000 square foot facility right next door to the uh, recycle center. And it's kind of interesting that uh, it's going to be a educational, uh, a, an opportunity for uh, young people, uh, citizens can go in for environmental displays, demonstration uh, gardens, uh, exhibits, and hold meetings of sorts for those things called nature, nature ventures of the city. And I think it's very important that we have something of this type in our city. <clears throat> Have y'all been following the news of the people in Cape Town? Some of them are allotted at least a, a, a gallon of water a day for an indefinite period of time in the future and may, may be stopped pretty soon. Access to potable water is one of the most difficult things we're gonna be experiencing in the future. Even in Texas, we're having that problem and in America, we're having the problem today. We were able over the years to put in 54 million gallons per day of, of diverse uh, sources, uh, running down quickly at 20, 20 million gallons per day from Brazos River, 10 million from Southeast uh, Water Treatment Plant. We've got 6 million of the city of Houston water system and that's over off, off the Shattuck Parkway at uh, 521, <clears throat> where there's uh, it's a, ground, it's a res, uh, ground storage tank area there and also 16 million out of, 18 million out of uh, ground, which we don't drill groundwater sources at more in Pearland. We're gonna start using surface water sources. <clears throat> Recognizing the growth of Pearland, thought we better make sure we get out in front of it. That's one of the things that Clay has been very adamant about. Let's, let's make sure we've got the facilities to handle the future, which we have. We've got a 10 million gallon surface water treatment plant under design on County Road 48, which is Kingsley Drive. Uh, if you head south at, from uh, uh, Broadway, uh, it crosses Broadway and heads down all the way to Highway 6. It's called County Road 48 when, on the south side. So it happens that the, that the original uh, American Canal runs right through the South Park Parallel right where we're gonna be building this dude. So we've got the water source running by the plant. Pretty good planning, I think, on our part. Had a little capital improvements in various areas, roadways, Bailey Road, pretty well finished except for a few checkpoints. And checklist is working right now on signage and a few things like that. Had a lot of in the works right now, McCard Road, Max Road, Old Avenue Road, McCard Road, Pike Road, Orange Street. Smith Ranch Road. If you want this copy of this, of this presentation, you can get it over our website. You know, uh, it'll be available for your downloading and using it. I put all this in here because it's a good historical document that we can use for later. But um, I think you probably want to hear a little bit about Beltway 8 and 288 Toad. Well, Beltway 8, they're going to complete the, the construction of that all the way to Highway 45, which is a Gulf Freeway, 
And uh, this, they have, would do it with two lanes going east and two lanes going west. And I think that will be a, a, a significant improvement. Textile in Harris County, and incidentally, our, our county judge, Matt Sebesta, is the uh, technical advisor, uh, political advisor on TxDOT and, and uh, process that goes from about the Beltway down to uh, 59 in Brown, Brown Convention Center. And uh, also it starts down by, but almost down by Highway 6 in Missouri County, goes up to about where the Beltway is. And he and uh, Stacy Adams, there he is, Stacy. They're both uh, responsible for that entire facility, working with, making with, working with Texas and the state and the two cities, making sure it's good in place. And uh, one of the things I like about Paraland is we have eight connectors now at the Beltway 8 and the 288 intersection. Man, you can hook them and go east and you can hook them and go west uh, either way. And I think it's great. Here's a picture of that. We have a parks department, but Chris and Leah is the chairman of that. That's his son. I feel like that's a, yeah, I feel like that's a little retirement benefit there, sitting there playing on that guitar. <laughs> we, we're going to have a little, little music here later. But, uh, I think it's great, thank you. Quality of life, we have people have chosen where we live and work. And over 125,000 have chosen Paraland. They chose it because of our quality of schools, safe, stable community, quality of life, and managed environment, and our small town atmosphere with big city opportunities, which I think is very interesting. We've been very fortunate in, to have the University of Houston Clear Lake Harland Campus established. And Dr. Blake is here, and she has just been appointed as the fifth president and has been here less than about three to four months. And Dr. Blake, would you stand up and let everybody know who you are because we're going to get to know you better. <laughs> They're working with Alvin Community College on uh, taking some of their students. Uh, the Paraland Camps it will be a four-year through graduate school starting in fall of, of uh, 2018. That's coming around this next fall. And uh, when that happens, we will be one of the few four-year colleges with a graduate school uh, in, within 150 miles south of us in Texas. You can go to Houston, you can find them, but you won't be able to find them anywhere else. <laughs> They'll have four-year colleges, but not a four-year grad with, with graduate school. And uh, I think it's wonderful that we have that in place. And we just put in a new science building, which is under construction. I think the slab is just about finished. It's off on the right over there. And off on the left is where the students can have open area in between classes and kind of, you know, jazz with each other a little bit. <laughs> Alvin Community College. Crystal, where's she sitting? There she is. <laughs> wow, you gotta watch what you say when they're sitting next to you. <laughs> but she uh, has done a, now that's not, a, she's not in Pearland. But her connection to Pearland, I think is superior and superb because she has worked with the University of Houston campus and with Shadow Creek High School for the people that are in those schools to get start, start doing their work for, for advanced degrees. She's in partnership with Turner College uh, doing the same thing. She's been able to work uh, dual credit with, uh, with Turner College to make sure that when they graduate with social degrees and uh, that uh, it's just working in partnership with, with your regional groups is I think is what makes Paraland sort of functional the way they are. Paraland Independent School District. So, Dr. What's his name? <laughs> John Kelly. <laughs> He's been recognized with the, with the quality of, of uh, 
of the school man, uh, administration and the production of the students. And uh, he's, he's met the star standard for 95% distinction compared to 52 across the state. He does things like uh, SAT scores are higher ever than ever and, pat, and uh, surpassing the state average by 100 points. 90 students who graduated associate degree. I mean, it's marvelous what's happening in our schools today. It, we didn't do that back when I did it. And uh, I guess that's why I'm pitching this one. <laughs> but he does have some thoughts, additional uh, things that happened in his school. Jason Wells of the police department is now working with the young student doing some uh, mentoring program. If any of you would be interested in the mentoring program, Dr. Kelly would love to have you come visit with him because we're in desperate need of some students to be mentored by senior adults. And of course, girl meets goat. <laughs> I wonder what the conversation was. <laughs> but uh, also when you talk about Turner College, we have a new, New guy on the block here. Mr. Burchard is, uh, is the new principal, started last June. And uh, they have graduated 90 students in May of 17 last, last summer, with associate degrees, and let them go enroll in college. And what that means is they're, they're going to college with juniors, a junior in college. Depending on their, their goal, it may be that they may be an awful lot of uh, a lower level math or physics if they don't depending on what degree path they go through. But Alvin Community College and, and, and Alvin Independent School District have been very great partners of City of Pearland. And uh, Dr. James Dilfus, did James, did, did Buck be, did, did they, Buck? <laughs> hey, he's back over yonder. I want to make some sense. <laughs> what makes cities great is when the, we are partnering with the junior college outside of our city limits. We're partnering with, uh, with a, another independent school district, but it just so happens that they're doing everything west of 288, which are our citizens. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, we've developed a family of educational opportunities. That's what we've done. And I think it's really great. They've opened a couple of schools, Del, uh, uh, Shelby Brothers School, the one on the upper right has been opened and uh, just opened. It's, getting ready for service. The one on the, on the bottom is, a, is going to be a, ju a junior high school. And uh, I tell you, it's uh, and, and over in Alvin, the career in technology education, that's where they can get an awful lot of training. And that's where our students can take advantage of, our, of a regional educational opportunities. I think it's just wonderful the way we've done that. Police department. Well, They've kept me under observation here for about six, over, close to eight months already. <clears throat> and uh, I know we've had the chief here and uh, all of his, but uh, they have uh, done a good job of taking care of all the active threat program preparation. All the police officers have taken that. Uh, they've reorganized a citywide patrol district so that they can determine what is the best way to provide a, a police protection. And uh, they the reported that the, the robberies are down by 50%, and uh, they're going to try to enhance that across the rest of the rest of the city. And uh, they, they, they're doing some mentoring and with uh, bullying and conflict management with uh, our, not only our schools, but some of our businesses also as well. That's our command staff. Would you believe? that that staff of 75 years, that represents 75 years of police work so far in, in, in Pearland. I don't know how much you... <clears throat> and we lost a chief last year. Uh, he, if most of you know, probably remember uh, Chris Ball, and uh, he spent 38 years with the city. Started out drive, <laughs> driving a 1977 Plymouth Mer uh, Fury. And uh, he said, man, things have really changed back from what those days were back in, back in 1977, which they have. But our police department still is crammed. 
I lost an officer, Officer Panya. On the left, I have a notice from uh, Pete Olson. He had a house bill from the, from the Congress uh, setting, identifying the post office on Cullen Boulevard at 518 as uh, the Indy and Panya U.S. Post Office building. And off on the right is a picture of the governor sitting down there signing, no, he already signed it, but he's showing off to a fine delegation from Paraland on a state house bill, 938, designating a portion of 518 as Officer Panya's Memorial Highway. And uh, we'll set that up with some Tungus Dumb up for the entrance to Green Tea Pits. So, I think uh, it's, it's tough to lose a, lose a guy like that, but you need to recognize what they did, and I think we're doing that. He was a very special young man. He was from uh, Nigeria, incidentally, where one, a couple of our other people from Paraland ladies had, uh, had laid earlier were from Nigeria. Police, police department has done pretty good. Fire department, they put out fires. And they've been, they, they received a lifetime EMS recognition bronze medal for the Heart Association. Uh, they had a six year plan derived from standards and staffing that we uh, had, uh, had a con contractor do for us to uh, make certain that we have uh, fire stations in the right place and we have the right number of fire stations over a period of time. And that our training facilities uh, include the proper training. The department has been recognized. Uh, would be at least, at least, part of it has been recognized and commended for the outstanding contribution to the organization and rescue of citizens during the Hurricane Harvey event. And if you and if you remember, there were a lot of first responders out there, and that's really wonderful. Pete Martin took over as our emergency management coordinator in December. Uh, he hadn't been through one of our hurricanes here yet, but he was the captain in the Coast Guard. So I bet you he'd been through a bunch of those <laughs> as a captain in the Coast Guard over a number of years to be able to retire. <clears throat> For the first time, fourth time, the uh, Fire Department, Marshall, Fire Marshal's Office received a uh, award for Achievement of Excellence Gold Level Award in Fire Protection and from the fire marshal, State Fire Marshal Association. That's uh, our first responders, both fire, EMS, and, and uh, police have been just fantastic all through the years. You remember the guy, kid up there a little earlier playing the guitar? Well, that's the dad. He does, he's got an honest job. And uh, he's a, uh, They've, they've done a lot of good things. I think they've, they've had, they steered, you know, just recently we had the, uh, the Winter Games here in Pearland. We went out and got, the, we went out and got that. And uh, we're good for another year. We stole that from a city up north of Dallas. And uh, completed two lighted irrigation, uh, soft field, softball fields, and picnic pavilion, and parking stuff over off Centennial. Park, that's uh, phase two. We haven't finished that yet. We've got a lot more stuff to do over there. If you haven't been by, we're building a fight road down to help uh, uh, get good transportation in. And uh, I'm a, a great believer in having parks. When somebody tells me quality of life, I always think of parks. Okay, next time. Convention Tourist Bureau. I always used to think when I go in the city, I'd check those guys out and see what's going on. Well, we've got one, and they're doing a superb job in doing the Super Bowl last year. They, uh, they had put on a little uh, event, in a bunch of events in Paraland. They even had a trolley go around from event to event, and uh, had more than 1,900 visitors and brought in close to oh, $6.4 million worth of revenue for our hotels. Uh, the impact of tourism in Pearland produced $129 million in 2016, 
But in 2017, it was up to 4.7 million. And when they do, they bring it in, and that's most of that's from hotel occupancy tax, what they call hot tax. And uh, they've done a great job, and she came up with this idea of doing something, you know, the painted cows in Houston, the pelicans down in Clear Lake, you remember those? Well, ours are gonna be a pair of that. Pearscape project with vision to develop a public pear art sculpture trail of artistically painted four foot high fiberglass pears throughout the city. And, you, and it's surprising how people have gone through and they said, wow, I didn't know you had those. I said, that's a good idea, great, great idea. And uh, Pearland, uh, keep Pearland beautiful. We're doing pretty good on that. Uh, Andrew has uh, done, done, uh, done some watchful guidance on developing that facility even more since he's his organization has been designated the management of the facility. <clears throat> They've added uh, recycling textiles in addition to, to the other things that we have with curbside recycling programs. And I think that's great. And uh, so here's some of the items that he has. The kids off the upper left is garden. And uh, upper right has had some kids from out of town looking through the facility out there, recycle center. St. Helens group off to the lower left there, they were they just gotten through doing their pickup on their little roadway. And uh, I'm looking at this uh, wonderful group here that they, they took a bunch of boxes and made a, a, a city for Earth Day. And it was uh, fabulous, I was impressed. City of Pearland has, uh, has some art, some culture, it's just it's not developing as rapidly as we'd like. But uh, they do, you're, when you have arts and culture, they contribute to our economic development, quality of life, and also the recruiting efforts of economic development and the Convention Church Bureau. And the listing a few down at the bottom there was with, with some of the those. Closing comments. Apple started out in a, gar in a garage. Remember that? Look what happened to them. Pearland started out with, with a railroad depot, a Polish count named Zelensky, building a little project called Pearland. Well, I think that's kind of interesting. How we develop over the years, it makes a big difference what we are today. We are a growing city. Pearland was founded in 1894. It's a sleepy little crossroad all through our town, sometimes known affectionately as Six Shooter Junction. I mean, you know, know that. <laughs> and that was pretty, pretty accurate. And about 1965, had a population of 3,000 people. That's when I moved here. 35 years later, the 2000 census said we had 38,000. And about uh, four, uh, four, four uh, almost five years ago, Chronicle spotlighted city of Pearland in upscale, as an upscale Houston suburb. We've gained some regional recognition. Uh, with the Houston Chronicle reporting that some Houston suburbs are not what they used to be. They have become sophisticated cities with amenities associated with urban lifestyles. Three of the larger communities surrounding Houston have been have a new regional distinction and are called the lands, Fairland, Sugarland, and Woodlands, which I think is true. Becoming a standalone city, I think we are. Houston is a great city and we always go there and other places, but Houston is a relatively new city, has become relatively independent and is not dependent on Houston for entertainment, retail, shopping, medical, and core city services. We're separated from Houston by eight miles of undeveloped land all the way up to the Beltway, which is our north boundary with Harris County. <clears throat> and Pearland has, I think what, what you need is a standalone city, you must have direct access to regional mobility. And we have direct connection to Beltway 8, 288, Toll Road, five state highways that run through the city of Pearland. What more could you ask about mobility? And uh, Pearland's rapidly growing has created opportunities that we can, must take advantage of and uh, we need to work to make sure that we meet the challenges of our growth. We will continue meeting our challenges with good stewardship of tax dollars, 
continues upgrading our city services, the infrastructure, maintain our quality of life for our safe and livable city, and keep our small town atmosphere. Building an environment, we will continue building an environment that attracts corporate headquarters, high value retail, retail, industrial, medical, quality residential development, and to support our tax base, which is what we'd have to do with that sort of, that's where we get our good money. Provide educational, recreational, cultural, and leisure opportunities, which would include museums, performing arts facilities, people places, with upscale dining, shopping opportunities. It's really expected of a city. You're gonna be a destination city. Continuing momentum, Pearland has, uh, has completed 27, 2017 with good progress. Even though we had a long hot summer, a Harvey visit to Pearland, which we didn't enjoy, and snow on the rooftops, no freeze here and there. We don't get it about once every 20 years. The flooding damage during Harvey visit was catastrophic and the worst tropical rainstorm ever to hit the American shores. But you know, something really special happened. Our first responders, our local churches, schools, community organizations, and our citizens reached out to those in need, and Paraland truly became a family. And we will... <laughs> and we will continue working with our multiple partners, our local, state, and national elected officials, and with our citizens' continued support, we will recover and make Paraland a special cosmopolitan city. I want to thank you all for attending us today and contribute. The future, you know, belongs to those who prepare for it, and we are making good progress in building our attractive and contemporary suburban city. My job as mayor is to make sure that at the end of the day, that you'll always be proud to say, I'm glad I live in Pearland. Thank you for giving me a chance to visit with you.